Hello and welcome back to Pillars. We are in the Luminous Bathhouse in Perkis Overlook and looking for a particular woman in here. And uh, I did go back to the bounty, bounty givers and just return the bounties because I don't feel like that really uh, adds a lot to the story. And I want to focus on that. So, we are looking for a woman that has a special name, Brizze. But isn't she taking a bath? Like, that's kind of the point, isn't it? Oi, where are you? I'm real. We already talked with a lot of people in here. So, where is this Brizze? Apparently not here. Let's check out the upper floor. Maybe she's there. We don't know. She could be anywhere. But she probably is in here, right? Oh, she could be in the cellar as well. Where is that? Oh. Oh, I see. Hello there. You and I, we have a mutual friend, do we not? Yeah, I'm here at the director Castell's request. Good, good. The tension in her shoulders settles, and she has a small smile. A royal dead fire operative, Quarno, and his principio associate, Tola, will meet tonight to discuss the details of a, a business arrangement. They have bought out the entire first floor for privacy sake. Wow. Even Gunner, the proprietor, will excuse himself. Huh. How much does that cost? Only bathhouse attendants will be allowed to remain to ensure their comfort. You understand? Yeah. I know. <clears throat> Anything I should know about Tola? Tola is fond of drink, and her tongue flaps loosely when she has had too much of it. Uh, what can you tell me about Quarno? He is a snake in the body of a man. Though he is supposedly the Royal Dead Fire Company's man, he always seems to be working some deal on the side. Hmm. What do you need me to do? I will disguise you as a bathhouse attendant, so you might observe their meeting. With luck and some cunning, you may be able to discover the details of their special arrangement. I don't know. I'm not usually that subtle. I can just go and kill them. You will not be able to take your gear, but do not God. worry. Should the situation get out of hand, there will be a stash of weapons hidden in one of the changing booths. No deal. But I am sure it will not come to that. No, 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 no. No taking off my stuff. No walking in there naked. Do I have to be unarmed? You can't do this yourself? Yeah. Exactly. If I just want to walk in there naked... I don't know. You do it. I have had dealings with Tolar in the past, and I am certain she will recognize me. Hence why I have requested assistance from Director Castell, though it pains me to do so. Do I have to be unarmed? They will not believe you an attendant if you carry a blade. Her mouth quirks into a playful smile. But do not fear. I would not throw you to the wolves. Remember, should you have need of them, there is a stash of weapons in one of the changing booths. I don't like it. I'm not ready. I'll come back later. You must not let this opportunity pass us by. Are you kidding me? I hate this. Hate it. If I need to figure out where my gear went after this... Oh my god, no. I just really hate that in games. Uh, am I supposed to just take everything off now? Because if so, I would rather do it myself right now. I don't know. I suppose putting into your, it into your personal inventory doesn't really help. This is a terrible plan! You die now! But seriously, this is a terrible plan. Anyone wants to use my... Okay. Maya, 
You know, you hold on to all my gear. Even my pet. Unbelievable. Oh. If everyone has to be naked, I will be disappointed. Oh. My weapon. Uh, of course. We can't have a weapon. Right? We need to be properly naked. How about now? Oh, you like me day. now? Are you ready, Amika? Time is short. Yeah. Gelarde. Then you will take your disguise and I shall take your equipment, Ak. No. Take this rice wine as well. Perhaps you will find use of it, eh? What? What? So I get drunk? What? Will everyone lose their gear? Speak freely. Oh! Where's the gear? I really hope they're gonna get back their gear. So everyone is naked now. Okay, let's reload. <laughs> I don't know. So... I actually, I, I, I didn't check out one thing. Seems like the gear we have... Oh, come on. I, messed, I, I fucking hate the same games. And that's an understatement. Like, come on. Don't mess with my gear. I just don't know if we're gonna gonna get it back automatically. But if if I need to manually put it on them one by one, uh is there a way to quick a quick, quick equip it? Jeez, I don't know. I can't take it. If I need to if that's how it goes, we need to we will reload, kill her. And, uh, then that's it. And say fuck it all. Alright, I'm ready, Brizza. Are you ready, Amika? I'm ready. Alright, let's go. Holy hell. You better give me back all the stuff, and not in the bloody... Okay, Tola, let's talk. A boisterous woman with a long, sunburned nose motions you to approach. Her eyes droop half-closed, and the stench of liquor wafts off her. Ah, huh. what timing? Landing in all this water is making me... Oh. Uh, uh, what's this gathering about? Uh, would you like some rice wine? She drinks deep from the bottle and releases it with a belch and smack of her lips. She regards you through red rimmed eyes, red rimmed eyes, and slowly looks you up and down. <sighs> Your face. Weird. Have we met? Nope. Uh, it's probably the wine. Dora stares at you unsteadily, her eyes half closed. You must be really important if you can afford to buy at the bathhouse. Flatterer. Yeah. I'm no queen of Nekataka, but I do all right. I captain a ship for the Principe, and the big grouchy guy back there, Quano, works for the Royal Deadfire Company. Sometimes, when he's not doing stuff on the sides. Doing stuff like selling me cannons. That's what we're celebrating. Did I mention that? Quano told me about you. He thinks you're very special. That's because I am. I'm no queen of neck attack. Oh, come on. Doing stuff like right. selling me cannons. Get get drunker. That's what we're said. Has anyone ever told you you're great? Cause you are really great. You should ditch this stupid bathhouse. Join my crew 
I just got a bunch of fancy new cannons from Quano. We'll be the terrors of the dead fire. What do you plan to do with all that firepower? I'm gonna blow up some Valian trading company ships and take their luminous Ardra. Don't tell anyone. Bell and leave. Is that it? I think we have all we need, right? Right, Quarno. Oh. If I grow hungry or thirsty, I will call for you. Actually, let's just all be here. I still have no need. I just wanted to speak to you. He peers into your face a moment, as if trying to remember where he's seen you before. Then he gives a small shake of his head and looks away. What reason does an attendant have to speak with me? You have wealth and importance. I aspire to be like you. Huh. I see. He looks at you skeptically, yet leans forward with interest. Think fingering the torque around his neck what do you wish to know um what do you do for the real death fire company I manage munitions cannons gunpowder and the like he glares at your from under heavy brows more like he glares at you what do you wish to know what are the chick over there captain tola is a creature of the principi Though a minor one at best. In truth, her status matters little to me. For she has the coin to purchase enough munitions to outfit an entire fleet. What do you wish to know? Why would the Principe need such expensive weaponry? Find me a man who does not appreciate a fleet of cannons at his command. And I will show you a fool. The Principe appreciate cannons more than most. And they know when to turn them toward Valian trading company ships to get what they want. And some ships, let us say, they are ripe for the plucking. I see. What do you wish to do? I don't want to do a damn thing. So are we ready to just get out of this place? Do we learn enough? Like, that's pretty obvious. Please, don't be naked. Please, put on the thingy we had before. If you mess the sub game, I will not forgive you for this one. I will consider the Valian Trading Company questline unplayable. Please. Put, the, put up the gear. Exactly how it was. Oh, we got it. Woo! I'm sorry if it if it might seem a little extreme, but I've have I had to deal with this crap so many times in games. And every single time it's a bloody nightmare. Like when I those sentences when I hear that sentence that oh let me take off your gear. <sighs> I'm not that eager to hear that. That I hear that, I would just like, fuck no, fuck no. I'll take whatever option. Uh, that's not that. Killing everybody, everybody, burning down the entire town, that's not taking off. Done. I'll take it. Anything but taking off my gear. I just, I don't know. I don't like minor annoyances. And I consider that a total major annoyance. Unless you never get back your gear. I'm kind of cool with that. If if sometimes it happens like you just lose your gear like uh, permanently. I suppose that's okay. Pretty lantern. So, uh we need to find Archimere. But where is he? I think he's in here. So we did the. Uh... Hey you! Master waits for you by glowing pool downstairs. Got it. Wait a second. Huh? Did it? Oh my god! It did mess us up. Oh fucking believable. Ahoy. Game. I rely on these things.
So any kind of spell we didn't have. Uh, what? We don't have permanently in our spell book. We need to re-equip it. But I, it's it's not a major What's annoyance, but still. Spellbook was taken out. What? Okay. I'll forgive you this one. But still. Damn. I suppose it it possibly wouldn't have happened if I didn't take out the book myself. But I think it would have happened. I don't think uh, the hotkeys would have been uh, reapplied. No problem. So, big glowing pool downstairs? Where is that? Wait a second. I don't think he meant the basement. We don't have a big glowing pool downstairs. Archimere? Where the hell are you? Oh yeah, that's that's it. Okay. Starting to consider his backyard. What are you guys doing here? Looks fancy. Archimere's eyes are closed in deep concentration, his attention entirely focused on the glowing pool in front of uh, him. Let's check it out. Archimere gestures down at the scrying pool. You peer into the waters, dark silhouettes sti sit arrayed in a circle, and the surface of the pool ripples in tune with muted voices carrying from below. They appear facing the water? Not something I would do. Knock on the surface of the water, sure enough. All the seated figures turn to you at once, their faces obscured by hoods. Oh, I see. One of them makes an impatient, beckoning gesture. I'm gonna dip my face in the water. No sooner does your skin break the surface tension than you feel a breeze of warm air. You are peering into a stone chamber ringed with braziers and tapestries as you would an open window. Robed man and woman clutch the armrests of their thrones. Water drips down your chin. The other archmagi seem, for the moment, unfazed by your presence. An Almana folds her arms and stares down another woman who keeps her fists balled at her sides. The ooze drips from the sleeves of the Almana's robe and pulls at the door. You mistake the matter, Calicot. My curiosity and perusal are not endorsements of her research. Maura nods with an air of boredom. Bekarna won't suddenly be vindicated by the likes of us having simply read her work. Something green and twisted wriggles under the table. Calicot points down and a flash of light incinerates it on the spot, filling the room with the stench of overcooked snails. <clears throat> How do I know that smell? A suppressed chuckle carries over the silence that follows. You're a slippery fiend, Maura. Some of us refuse to taint our reason with the half wit conclusions of circle rejects. And keep the slugs to yourself, Calicot grits her teeth. <sighs> well, say nothing. That will be enough of you two. Archimere looms over your shoulder and addresses the rest of the room. Mara, your pet can wait outside. Archimere waits patiently as Mara makes a shooting gesture. A shooing gesture. <clears throat> a wet, slurping sound echoes in the hall, and something dark and large makes its way toward an exit. If we are ready to speak rationally, our patience is about to be rewarded. He strokes his beard and sighs, inviting you to speak. Where exactly are we? To bring you Bicarno's research? I bid greetings to the circle. A tiny wings cross at you. Ah, an echo of manners for a change. 
we meet again, one hopes our parting will be as the last and leave the both of us wiser for the experience. Langrad raises her eyebrows at you. I dare say that my lesson in metaphysics brought the circle this far. How are Turisolfos and Gafonersos? I'm glad that my perspective on souls helped. Nidigaut messages, uh, <clears throat> massages his brow with both hands. This posturing is without value or reason. Get on with it, old man. He beckons to Archimir. <clears throat> I was about to do exactly that. The Archmage nods and clears his throat, elbowing you out of the way so that his face commands the scrying pool. Makarnam was no Archmage, but we all agree that she was on the cusp of breakthrough before her unfortunate disappearance. Archimir takes the book from you and licks his finger as if he as as he begins to turn the pages. Okay, just uh, help yourself, <coughs> Archimir. Why did you never officially recognize her? Her studies had no merit. They yielded nothing of interest or relevance until today. Archimir raises an eyebrow. Be that as it may, someone did not wish for this breakthrough to occur. For that alone, we have good reason to seek knowledge of her amateurish, if enthusiastic, research. Archimedes eyebrows form a steep triangle as he arrives at a page of uh, mathematical figures and coordinates. Someone? Have a corporate in mind, do you? And several gazes turn to you, and several mouths open to speak up. Archimir silences them all in turn with a loud clearing of his throat. It would seem she arrived at one of our conclusions. A river of souls energy flows through the death fire. Archimir nods. And yet, she traced the path of the river while we only speculated on its, exist on its existence. <clears throat> Archimir pulls on his beard and squints down at the almanac. Where does it go? Archimir sets the book aside and pulls out a vellum of vellum map of the Deathfire. He traces his finger from the shallows of the Great Reef northward. Where it goes is not my immediate concern. I'm occupied by who presently follows it. The path of Eotas is winding but unerringly intentional. His finger begins to stray east. He pauses an open ocean. His brow furrowed. Very important information there. Could that be? Tyne leans forward, trailing off as if, as he cranes his neck for a glance at the parchment. Suddenly, all of the attention shifts back to you. I think we've taken more than our share of the watcher's time, unless there are any final questions. <clears throat> On blinking, Archimir lifts his brow and waits, your dismissal hovering on his tongue. Can I join the circle? <laughs> yeah, I'm the best mage ever. <laughs> you? You would ask this after rubbing my manor? Showed you the decency to spare your life? Archimir turns to you, his expression pale and affronted. Around the table of Archmagi, someone chokes on a sip of wine. Absolutely not. Will there be anything further? Archimir waves his hand, the matter closed. I killed Council Halt. I'm the best wizard of all time. You're not holding something back. Yeah, you're holding something back, what is it? Archimir takes in the other members of the circle. Their responses are myriads. Some shake their heads, others shrug and others still lean back in their chairs and wait to see how it plays out. Better than I, that I remain silent on the matter. If we wish to invite you into our confidence, you would surely know of it. I don't get to hear the rest? You are a member? Are you a member of the circle? I hope you don't think we would divulge our secrets to a mere mercenary. Archimedes gaze hardens as... And the self congratulatory smile cleaves his face. You're not entitled to everything I own, burglar. 
Oh, come on! This this burglar thing. Why was Kunsta Hot so interested in this? Are you keeping secrets from us all then? This is the first I'm hearing of it. Minaletta rests her chin on her fist and uh, fixes Archimir with a severe glare. It wasn't of immediate pertinence. Uh, besides, Kunsta Hot has been dispatched yet again, esteemed mistress of missiles. Archimir favors her Minaletta with a stiff bow. Your flattery has gone stale. To address the Watcher, I imagine that Konzahaut wished to sustain his wicked existence in the front of Essence, but you kindly put a stop to that. Minaletta nods, favoring you with the smile that she denied Archimir. Nothing further, Archimir Jai. <clears throat> Here, baubles for your service, not that you deserve them. Consider your debt repaid with interest. Archimir turns back to the circle and pointedly ignores you. All usable by wizard. Did we get some kind of a special book? Oh, this is trash. <laughs> I'm sorry, your book sucks. That's probably why you gave it to me. Is that it? We can kill Archimir. <laughs> well, I don't know. Return to Martino. Wait for a lot to explain further? Nah, that's not what's gonna happen. So we have a mission. So we have to return to Director Castol. Also, we need to go to Prince Aurihi. About Ukaizo. Okay, maybe we're not gonna kill Archimir. They seem to be onto something about uh, Eotos' uh, path. And perhaps intentions. However, it seems more like a, a side thing than really something that's important. Maybe we should kill Archimir. <laughs> I don't know. If I if I do uh, another playthrough, I'm not not sure how I'm gonna go about it. Should we kill more people? I kind of I kind of want to. Explore more options, but also wanna kill more people. Not sure how that works out. But I think I was relatively uh, thorough. Anyway, uh, let's just go into the palace now. Kahanga Palace. Yeah, we need to talk to some kind of prince who wants to know about Ukaizo. And I know quite a bit about Ukaizo. I have a map that leads to Ukaizo. That better be a l worth a lot of money. I would like to get into that uh, haggling. That instead of just like, hey, what's up? I found your. Find Ukaizo. The things everyone uh, dreams about. Uh, visiting. Um. Uh, how about uh, you give me like 2,000 copper for it? No, no, I don't even say it. They just, I just give it to them and they just like, Oh yeah, oh, whatever. Like, there you have it, 2,000 copper. But that yes, is not the guy. You need something else. No, no, no. Where's the guy? Who is he? How is he called? Prince Aruihi? Where is he? I think he's somewhere on this floor. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy. Do not leave me in suspense, I say. Have you found Matario Cozy? Oh yeah. A riddle on the island pointed the way to Ukaizo. The prince accepts the chart in silence, holding it up to the light and pouring over every detail with interest. His hands tremble as he holds the paper. An unusual accounting of the isles, I say. Each one measured in relation to. Do you have what you need to find the Kaizo? If I did, my sister would hold a parade in your honor. Great. Ngati is one to throw obstacles in our path, but I say that an outdated chart is better than none at all. 
outdated chart? That's the most up-to-date chart about it. Thank you, my prince. Jesus. Why, why is that benevolent? Sailing under the waters isn't cheap? Yeah. How about that? What is this? One share of what you paid the expedition? What? Not even... 2,000 copper? Passionate. Ikera, here, for your expenses. 2,050? Jesus. When we know enough, my sister will finance a fleet-wide search. Not for breadcrumbs, but lost to Kaizo. Watcher, I... I take it that none of my people escaped the clutches of that island. I sent good women and men to die in the name of the tribes and... in the vague hope. Yes! May Ngati thank them for their courage. No! Odaka for their loyalty. No, 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 no. no. As you see, you get it all wrong, Prince Aurihi. You sent a lot of people to their deaths, and it's not about like, oh yeah, may the gods help them now. No. You killed a lot of people. I had some trouble with the Royal Death Fire Company on Open Sea. Did I? The bar club was a message from the the Vahaki to their any visitors. Yep. For what do they protect Matario Cozy when its knowledge could help all Hoana? You sure about that? One day I will have words with their Ranga to settle our differences. I had trouble with the Royal Death Fire Company on Open Seas. Ikira. They will not let you escape with what they could so easily steal. Is that so? But will they not find the original chart as unprotected as a Reparo food pile? Not if you send the war party to sink their ships and cut the rest down. Onikaza needs our fleet strength here, in her city. Yeah. Even with the help of the gods, our task was unlikely before these complications, I say. He waves you on, eager to change the topic. This is much to learn in a day, even for this warrior. I sent the expedition to their fate, and those who followed. Death is on my conscience this day. I'm not gonna make you feel better. May all who fell on Matario Cozy slip through the eel's jaws. Juana and outsider alike. But on to brighter times, I say. If Ukaizo can be found, then so too will the hopes of our people be made manifest. Too much has happened for you to waste words with the royal brother. From now on, you work with Onikaza as an honored guest of her rooftop garden. Only, be kind to her cats. Be pleasure working with you. You say this now, but Onikaza pays better than her royal pinch fist of a brother. May the wind caress your sail. So... Okay, we have to go back to Castol. We need to go toward Deltas. But I think we're just gonna have a work with Castol before. You must gather your... We can really do it before. Uh, the trading company didn't like us much. And even right now it feels like we're just giving up so much. For their favor. But it's just so not worth it. Venturing forth. We can go into the... Polaro Estate. Actually, we can go into the Valiant Trading Company. You hear a he you hear a set of heavily armored footsteps from down a nearby alley. I ignore it. Or is that so uncommon that someone actually has some armor in Nekataka? I need to check out this guy. The narrow streets in this neighborhood are largely deserted at night. A 
and the echoes of heavily armored footfalls carry down the cobbled lanes. A glance around the corner reveals an aging meadow folk, uh, garishly dressed in the stylish of a dear wooden noble. Lamplight glints from the rings on his fingers and chains around his tail neck. Damnation! I told you incompetence that this was not the right street. The words are slurred, as if the man's tongue is too heavy for his mouth. Several men and women, all too heavily armored for the climate, Company the man. Apologies, master. Uh, if he. Shut up, fool! By Magrin's flame, it is always this hot. I'll pay a thousand ducks for another drink. Approach the group. One of the guards leans in toward the man. This is not the safest of streets, sir. Perhaps, uh. It is your job to keep me safe, not peril like a schoolmarm. What? At your approach, one of the guards puts a gauntleted hand on the man's shoulder, but he twists out from under it. Finally, someone with a dot in their head. He pats toward you, gesturing in broad swipes of the arm as he speaks. These imbeciles have gotten us entirely lost. Can you point the way to what it was? Queen Bert, I believe? Your money or your life. Greetings, my lord. Oh, Valen Trading Company. The smile, the man smiles broadly. Ah, a lady of culture and beautiful as well. The pleasure is mine, madam. He bows deeply. He blinks as he rises. By the flame, you are not the watcher of Cadnua, aren't you? I attended your court once, Lord Belmer of Echo Bay. Ha! <laughs> to find you here, of all places. He scratches his head. Thought you died! Damn. Give him... Give him directions. I got better. Clearly. <clears throat> Let's give him directions. What? Streetwise, you do it. Heather gives the man and his guards clear, uh, concise directions back to Queen's birth. You have my sincere gratitude. He bows deeply and offers a small bag of gold coins. For your trouble. Sure. Okay, but that's cool. No, 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 not that. Well, we're going with the Queen's birth anyway. We don't need to mock some guy. I, I'm just kind of mixed with everybody. But maybe I can be friends with the Valiant Trading Company. And if they try to... Screw me over. Well, I guess... Uh, I'm just gonna kill them all. Easy. So, it is the only thing that we we have to do before we leave this place. Come on, White's Night again. Alright, doesn't matter too much. We're just gonna wait a lot of bed. Also, we can return the mission. I, I seem to have... Uh, yeah, I completely broken the... The Principi quest chain, at least in this town. By murdering... What of the houses? So we can rest. We should rest. Till morning. Midnight, no morning. Just do that. Oh shit! And we need to go back to the second floor, I believe. Where we will have to deal with the big big guy that I just don't know the name yet. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
Mm -mm. After that, after all that, I think we just, well, we no have nothing else other than this. I don't know if this is gonna lead to anything, but after this, we just gotta chase the Eotas. But I wanted to be thorough. Director Castol, you have something else? Do you suppose a Hasongo was a kind of vengeance for Rawatai's assistance with the God Hammer? <laughs> oh, listen to me. It all sounds perfectly mad. I don't care. I took care of things at the bathhouse. Perfetto. What did you discover? Ah, uh, Corno is selling gunpowder and weapons to the Principi. Diverus? That is worse than I suspected. Please, explain. Tole Spare me no details. Tola is planning on using Royal Death Fire Company weapons against the Valian Trading Company convoy carrying Luminous Adra. Madiko, our convoy routes are meant to be a well-guarded secret. I might as well have sent the Principi a letter. Quadno is smuggling Royal Death Fire Company munitions. An interesting scheme. Fortunate that you were able to get wind of That's it. That's all I got. That is enough to work with. Agressiva. I do believe I'm going to ruin Quarno's day. Belfetto Watcher. Already our partnership proves fruitful. That's it. Alright, that's it. No, we, we don't have that. We, we, we still haven't finished with the Valen Trading Company. Okay. We need to go to Ashima. And, uh... It is past time to talk, well, talk, but I don't know if you're gonna talk, but to figure out what is Eotas is up to. <clears throat> so in the sail out and go there, probably take a nap before that. Play. Sure. I think we talked with everybody at this point. So sail out. Oh, we don't have a paladin. Sometimes I, I see that we have some kind of aura that the paladins give. I played the, the first game as a paladin first. I uh, just leave by sea. It was it was good. I felt like it was. Yeah, I think I think I played it because the stats were a little bit different, and uh, you needed. It made more sense to be a tank, or at least uh, be defensive, resolve, or conversation skills. I'm not so sure. I'm not exactly sure about that, but I think that that's what I recall. Yeah. The first game definitely felt harder. Even Varen. Anyway. So, Ashima. There's... There are no ships here. Like, anyone who says like, Oh yeah, we... We dominated the Death Fire. There's so many ships we got, hmm? Come on. I'm not gonna buy it. Ship morale. Sewer fin. Yeah, we're eating some fishes. It's fine. Anyway, guys, that's it for now. Thanks for watching and see you next time.